Obviously, Chelsea win, got my beer again. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well, and welcome to today's video, which is a match review of Chelsea's hard fought 1 0 win against Newcastle United in the Premier League at Stamford Bridge. Steve Bruce fully channeled his inner Rafa in this game, and it was very much a toon fortress that Chelsea had to break down, and they did. And really, they probably should have scored more. But we're going to get into all of that today. But I want to quickly remind you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy for daily video uploads of Chelsea Football Club stuff. Even if you're not a Chelsea fan, hey, you might enjoy it. So please subscribe, hit the bell notification icon. And why not like the video to help Jan out? Come on. Right, going into this game, Chelsea were in, or certainly still are in, fine form. Uh, wins across loads of competitions, scoring goals, looking a bit better at the back, still shaky at times, but generally good vibes in West London. And Newcastle were buoyed from their win last time out at Old Trafford. I know Old Trafford are not necessarily a tough opponent, but still they were feeling good. They've got the Matty Longstaff and um, Sean Longstaff, I think it is. Revolution, two midfielders in the middle, the brothers, they're very good. And as predicted, Bruce set up with an incredibly pragmatic defensive system of five. For one, I want to talk about player performances and give you a bit of narrative of how the game went. So let's open that analysis screen. Boom! The graphic next to me is the match center statistic board thingy from who scored to give you guys a little idea of how the game went statistically. I got a lot wrong in my predicted lineup because I didn't have time to watch the press conference before my match preview. Anyway, Chelsea played a 4-3-3. They had Kepa in goal, Azpilicueta and Alonso on the flank, Zuma and Tomori at centre-back, Jorginho, Barkley they started with, and Mount in the midfield, and the front three consisted of Tammy Abraham, Willian on the right, hudson Adoy on the left. Very attacking. The shape shifts a little bit, especially later when uh, Pulisic comes on, but this was the starting vibe. It's kind of what you would have thought, a very attacking formation, something to go at Newcastle, because let's be honest, everyone knew Newcastle were going to sit back in this game. So let me give you a basic breakdown of the journey of the narrative of this game. The opening minutes really set the tone of how generally this match was it was Chelsea doing attacking and Newcastle doing counter-attacking they were very well organized and they do need a shout out Newcastle they've looked a lot better ever since they've gone for a more compact block and five at the back um, so essentially it was Chelsea with the onus to do things but they would it has to be said Newcastle were incredibly confident in this game they did never really look shaky maybe it spells towards the sort of third quarter latter part of the game but generally they came to Chelsea with full belief in themselves and credit to Steve Bruce for somehow inducing that in his players. The one thing I did notice in the early stages that gave a lot of encouragement to Newcastle was Chelsea were very soft in midfield. Ross Barkley was probably the big muscly one in that and he actually got an injury and had to come off you know not too far into the game but generally Chelsea were being out-muscled. Chelsea weren't looking to play that type of game. They want to do fast combinations, passes, attacking direct football. But when the physicality came into it, they were absolutely losing the battle. First clear-cut chance comes in the 16th minute when Callum Hudson-Odoi puts a lovely ball onto Willian's head, which he basically heads wide, and he needs to at least be hitting the target with that. Hudson-Odoi was immaculate with his passes or switches of play or attempts to assist all game, and he eventually gets the assist as well. Hashtag spoiler, I'm sure you've watched the match. In the 19th minute, Callum Hudson Adore yet again sets up Mason Mount lovely in the middle of the area, which he turns and just basically sticks it down the goalkeeper's throat. But it's after a really impressive offensive phase of play from Chelsea, they are demonstrating a lot of exciting football at times when they're afforded the opportunity to do so. And around the 25th minute, Chelsea do concede a big chance, or they're just really poor defensively playing out, and Newcastle basically carve out a decent chance in the 25th minute, but Chelsea survive as they often do recently. At this point, it's basically becoming a really physical game. Chelsea have hardened up a little bit, but it's still maybe losing the physical battle. There's a few cards and fouls going both ways. Uh, hudson Adoy has probably been the brightest player, and like I said, it's really his service and his footwork that's making him the brightest star on the pitch at this point, I think. By the 35th minute, Chelsea, I think, may be getting frustrated. And this kind of time, I was noticing really high confidence in Newcastle because they knew their plan was working. It's over half an hour. They were feeling comfortable. Chelsea, they were winning the physical battle and they knew they had something on the break. 
And around this time, this is when Barkley comes off for Kovacic. And I think Barkley offers more offensively, as we know, but Kovacic probably with his ball progression and dribbling and just carrying it out of uh, pressing situations in midfield. I think a lot of people were happy to see Kovacic and I think he probably would have started if his fitness was a bit better. So it's half time. The best chances were Mount turning on the centre spot. Willian's header that he headed wide and Chelsea also had a free kick that Willian just hit the wall with and it was a really good position actually so it was frustrating but I've popped up the half time statistics on the graphic just to give you some reference of where Chelsea were at this point so make sure you have a look. Are you looking at the halftime statistics? Cool, are you interested? <laughs> anyway, the second half starts, and you know what? In open play, I'm gonna say it throughout this whole game, Alonso was pretty darn awful. Yes, he scored the goal, I'm gonna tell you about in a minute, that basically won the game, and that's great, and therefore he sort of should have started and should have played because it was obviously fate. But in terms of open play, he was really poor in transition, he was just, just looked slower than ever. He conceded an early yellow card and he was getting turned quite a lot and he looks like he was low on confidence. I know he was getting booed by the tune because he's ex Sunderland. That must have made his goal feel much better. But still, so bad for me. And it was at this point I was taking my notes and I thought, you know what? Alonso is absolutely pony. <laughs> And it's a shame because I've been praising him recently, like, yeah, he's doing a bit better, he's come in, but man, sorry, I needed to get that off my chest. Right, 55th minute sort of onwards, this is kind of why I took a note and I thought, you know what, finally, Jorginho and Kovacic together in the midfield, they're starting to get behind the Longstaff brothers, which is good, and they're carving out more chances. I don't know if this was an instruction from Lamps at halftime or something, but something's changed and they're getting beyond their midfield, those two. Well, Chelsea's too big on their midfield too, and it was really starting to make a difference. And by the way, I want to say now, I think Jorginho was excellent in this game. I, I think I counted one misplaced pass all game, and his vision's getting better and better and better, his distribution's getting better and better and better, and he's so calm playing out of the press, so shout out Jorginho. 56th minute, Abraham does hit the crossbar from a set piece. I think William maybe puts it in. He gets his head on it and hits the crossbar. Very frustrating. So Pulisic does come on from Mason Mount, and he plays in the number 10 role. He plays in the hole, Christian. In Pulisic, Jorginho and Kovacic playing a deeper midfield too which suits them both in terms of play style um, and basically Frank's going for a win here and not long after Pulisic comes on in the 68th minute he has an excellent chance to score great work from Callum Hudson the door of his feet to get it to Christian Pulisic who basically take, delays a little bit of seconds maybe a man short on confidence and his shot gets saved. Dubravka had an awesome game it's worth saying he was a excellent goalkeeper he was an excellent goalkeeper he is an excellent goalkeeper and was demonstrating that in this game i could love learn to talk so in the 74th minute he was getting booed all game for my money he was poor in open play all game but the ex sunderland player marcus alonso with a long range drive to be honest for how good he was all game debravka he probably should have done better for this goal Marcus Alonso gets the goal from long range. Again, assist Hudson Odoi. Hudson Odoi has been so, so good in this game. And probably the Chelsea's best offensive player. 1 0 Chelsea. Again, I've looked at my notes, and at this point, I've written Tammy Abraham was excellent in terms of work rate. He had obviously a couple of chances to score in this game, but he was very, very good. He was good at holding up the ball. He had a couple of good flick ons. Sometimes they came off, sometimes they didn't. But his work rate never dropped, and basically, he's shown again why he, he's. Chelsea's number nine and why Frank Lampard can't drop him basically. 80th minute cover to Aspi to Tammy they're on the break they do a little triangle it's squared for a sure tap in from Tammy and the Newcastle defender comes slides in and blocks over the bar this was the most like certain goal you would ever see and this was the one that was going to settle the game no one could believe it when that ball goes over it was so frustrating just should have been 2-0. Steve Bruce, he makes all his final changes in the last sort of 10 minutes. All his three changes have been attacking ones. To be fair to him, he's seen his team's defensively resolute and he wants to go for a win. Well, he, I think he made an attacking change at 0-0 two after. He wanted to get at least a point. And you, you, know, you could forgive him for thinking he can get something out of this game, seeing as it wasn't all dropping for Chelsea and they didn't have the best luck, maybe. But Chelsea do see out the final minutes in a squeaky at times scenario and get all three points. Right, let's get rid of the analysis screen and talk about a couple of players and what this means for Chelsea generally. All right, so for me, the standout worst player in this game in open play was Marcus Alonso, but he was the match winner. So can't hate on that. But in terms of good performers, I think Jorginho was excellent. I did see Tomori making a couple of mistakes, but he also showed why he's so good. Zuma was kind of meh 
as was maybe Azpilicueta. Good at times. I mean, the combinations from Azpilicueta are getting better, I suppose. God, that rhymed. Anyway, Pulisic coming on, I would have loved for him to score that goal for his confidence, but it's good that he got a good half hour or however long it was, so it would have been nice to, for him to get the goal, but he basically looks focused and hopefully he can move on from here. I've mentioned Tammy before, excellent work rate, he probably should have had a goal, very positive signs from him, we move. William, again, William showed what he's good at in this game he did do a couple of moments where he tracked right back and did some defensive work he, you can tell he's proper working hard for frank lampard which is great and i guess it was good enough it would have been nice for times to see pedro's more offensive threat in that game but to be honest chelsea needed to be sharp on the defense and the transition and Willian's probably better than pedro at that kepa didn't really have to do anything so i don't want to talk about him obviously hudson adoy probably man of the match maybe i mean i really love Jorginho in this game i love what he does but hudson adoy he put in so many like would be perfect assists and he switches the play really really well he's going to be such a player for chelsea so big up hudson adoy man chelsea have got another win on the table and they're looking pretty good remember this is it's a one nil win against newcastle that was sweaty at times but it's a resurgent Newcastle and they played very well defensively. Chelsea got another elusive clean sheet. It's not a glamorous win 1-0 at home against Newcastle and Steve Bruce Newcastle but it's an important win and it's huge and looking back at this game in the future it would just be another three points and a clean sheet. Frank Lampard can look at this positively, go into the next game against Ajax in the Champions League hoping for Rudiger and N'Golo Kante to start and feel pretty positive about things. So yeah, that's my match review. Guys, remember, if you want to join the Discord server and chat to me and other subscribers in the Discord server, please do click the Patreon link down in the description. It costs $1 and you can just talk to me and the guys about football in Chelsea anytime you want. What do you think about this game? Get down in the comments, express your thoughts and opinions. I want to hear them, like the video if you enjoyed the content. And remember, you can follow me on social media at FootballYannick on Instagram and Twitter. That's at Football Yannick, I'm out guys. You lot enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I let me back.